to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. It's Power Talk Friday. Deb Mitchell joins me on the show today. You may know Deb on Instagram as Design Writer Deb. Deb is a writer that specializes in serving interior designers. Her career began as a professional writer when she responded to an ad in a local Charlotte magazine, which was looking for volunteers for a reader's panel. On a tour of the magazine's offices with the other panelists walking around, an idea for an article came to her. And when she mentioned it to the editors, they hired her on the spot as a writer. I love this initiative, right? Now, 10 years and hundreds of articles later, Deb decided to blend her design feature writing experience with her pre-writing career experience in high-end retail sales. And now she helps interior designers move their businesses forward with strategic copywriting and content marketing services, right? So you're hearing this, right? She has a very distinct niche. She blends two skills, writing for interior design and sales. This creates her superpower. And this is something I love. If you think back to Erica Ward's episode, it's her transferable skills. She's taking it from one career, blending them, putting to work for her in her new career. So I just love it. It's no wonder that today Deb's list is growing with designers at nearly every stage of their business that she helps them with their writing. She has bylined articles in publications such as Casual Living, Design Texas, Lake Norman Magazine, and Today's Charlotte Woman, also on the Renegade Writer blog. Let's see if when you listen to this episode, you have some of the same aha moments that I did. Hi, Deb. Thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Hi, Luann. Thank you. It's good to talk to you. It is. So, Deb, I love that we're going to dig deep into finding your differentiators. You know that we've had Fred Burns on the show so many times, mm-hmm. and he always talks about, you know, what's your only. And, of course, my, my dear friend and colleague, Nicole Heimer, who um, talks about defining your brand. She had the chapter in, our, in the last book, uh, A Well-Designed Business, The Power Talk Friday Experts. She, of course, is the person who has done all of my web website and copy and built my website. And, but this is, you know, you're a writer and one of your services is helping people develop their copy so that it sings to our potential clients, right? And attracts Mm -hmm. them right to our front door. Yep. Right. It's like the Pied Piper, right? You want to put it (laughs) out there so that the people who it hits and resonates with turn around and say, Hey, what's happening over there? Right. Exactly. Right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pick this apart. And um, interestingly, we recently had Natalie Norcross on the show. And her show was five things you have to do to get PR. And her number one tip, Deb, was be specific. And it really did Mm -hmm. talk all about finding your niche. Your our Nancy Gansakalfer, niche is rich and Mm -hmm. broad is broke, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And (laughs) and really attracting and identifying, first forget attracting, first identifying your ideal client. So tell us a little bit about how you approach it as a professional copywriter who services the interior design field. How do you approach it with your clients when you're working with them? Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, just say that it is so common for any business owner, but, you know, of course, I work mostly with interior designers, so I know how they think and what their issues are. And it's all like all of the things that you're talking about, the differentiators, their ideal clients, who are they, what do I need to put in my copy, all the things are like in a big ball in our, in their heads, right? Like, you can't make sense of it on your own. So, you know, in, in respect to 
you know, Fred and Nicole, they are experts at really helping people pull those things out. And that's, that's what they're talking about there. But I, it's easier said than done. And I get that. (laughs) But when I'm working with my clients, and I think, you know, Nicole is, you know, total guru at this and her define your brand method is, you know, a deep dive into all of that. And I do a deep dive with my clients as well, whenever, you know, whatever I'm working with them on, whether it's, you know, an email sequence or, you know, their, their bio or whatever it is, we talk about their clients kind of first and foremost, the clients are at the center of everything, right? Because who your clients are and what they care about is going to inform what you need to talk about in any of your marketing, in any of your messaging. Um, So if I don't understand who your client is, and if I can't get my head around it as a writer, I'm not going to be able to write well for you. So we really start the process um, taking a hugely deep dive there. And I do, you know, we kind of unravel that big ball that's in their heads. Interior designers, you know, when they've been working for even a few years, they tend to really understand their clients. They're in these people's homes. You know that. Mm-hmm. Like, it, you, designers n- can know their clients like no other business owner, I think. They can really understand how they live, what they care about, what they're happy to spend money on, what they're hesitant to spend money on, who they're comfortable with in their lives, who they're not. You really understand not just the demographics about them, like their age, whatever to whatever, and their income is whatever, you know their psychographics. And their psychographics are all those other things, all their values and their personality. So those are the kinds of things that I talk about with my clients first and really dig into as deeply and as thoroughly as I can um, so that I kind of have some raw material from which to write their copy. Does that make sense? It does. And here's how I'd love for you to really have it make a light bulb go off in my head, Deb, Mm -hmm. is on one hand, you can have two interior designers who are at similar levels in their career. So Mm -hmm. if you take two luxury interior designers, so you, you have them side by side, to a lot of the world, especially outside the industry, but even inside the industry, you might say they're targeting the same client. Now, we know from a standpoint of processing our own business, and what I mean by that is, if if I'll use myself as an example. So we had a window treatment retailer literally a mile away from us for 25 years of our business career at Window Works, right? So, Mm -hmm. but... And, and they were a Hunter Douglas dealer. The, externally, they were all the same quote unquote things. But we very rarely competed with them for clients because internally, I knew that what we did was we didn't sell product, that we sold our service and our window works, our, our, we sold yes. us. Okay. Yes. So, so here's <laughs> the thing, yes, right? So here's the thing. So I know that from an inside, but when you start to work with a client, and when I, now we're back to designers. You start to work with a designer and you say to them, you know, you know your clients intimately, your clients' psychographics. Like my friend Judith Neary uses the same mm-hmm. term, right? <laughs> so how do we get past two similar interior designers and not listing the same psychographics? Well, my yeah. ideal client drives a, a, a Mercedes and my ideal client, you know, likes to play mm-hmm. tennis. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you get it further than that so that a designer listening can get it further for herself or himself? Yeah. Now you're really on to something, Luann, because actually that's why we spend, my clients and I spend so much time pre-writing mm. is because the questions just keep going. It's kind of like, okay, so they love to play tennis, huh? Is there something to that? Do they, you know, um, do, what's what's their friend group like? Are they entertaining after tennis matches? Mm. Or that's a, that's a different kind of entertaining than like a nice dinner party. Everybody's sweaty, mm-hmm. you know. But it's like mm-hmm. we start asking more questions. Um, But to circle around to actually when you're talking about having two similar interior designers seemingly playing in the same sandbox, so to speak, um, how they deliver 
their services, just like you said with your business, mm -hmm. just like with Window Works, that you're not just selling product, you're selling the experience of working with you. Mm -hmm. um, same thing for designers. And I really find that many, many times the differentiators happen in the service experience more so than in the aesthetic or the end deliverable, right? Because like you said, luxury high end, even if, you know, aesthetically, and, and I live in the South, so, you know, Southern designers, there can be a lot of crossover between the aesthetics mm. um, and, and even a lot of the brands that they use in their projects and that kind of thing. But how they deliver that, how they work their magic, there are always special touches and even if it's just it can even just be the personality I had one client who is very introverted and that in and of itself is unusual for an interior designer right mm -hmm. I mean many times I mean I think there are more introverted designers than we know they are yes. but they feel like they need to pretend to right. be extroverted right, or right, you know because right. they got to look like a designer but in truth this woman has found a real niche working with people who would otherwise be intimidated by a high-end luxury designer. Mm. And they love working with her because she has such a, such a soft touch. Okay. And it's more, she's more likely to, you know, want to make you a hot cup of tea and quietly sit with you and talk about your home <laughs> than to like, you know, have bells and whistles. And she has found just a hugely loyal following of people who love working with her for that reason alone. And, and, you know, it's like, how do you know that unless you start asking question after question after, and like, you know, leading them down a path. It's kind of like how you interview people and like, you know, you <laughs> ask one question that leads to another thing. Like, that's interesting that they said. And so many times when I'm talking to my clients, that's why they say things that I get goosebumps and they don't even know it's a thing. Right. And then we circle back to it later and I dig in. I'm like, oh my gosh, that, do you even know how special that is? Do you even know how defining that is? Mm. So. And so we're all in this phase though, you're really step one, really just having an, an, an in-depth conversation about yeah. what the designer thinks he or she knows about their client. Mm -hmm. And maybe is it, is it does it extend to what they like about their ideal client what they so sure. in other words their observations of that ideal client but and and their their explore exploration of how that idea client ideal client lives and interacts and shows up in the world but then is it also what do i think about that ideal client i admire this about them i you know yeah. blah 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 yeah a thousand percent because you know designers are really i mean I'm sure I can't say this for every designer, but I think it's important to most designers to help their clients live the way they want to live in their homes and for their homes to reflect who they are and make it personal and make it feel like home, mm -hmm. right? Home is important to most of these designers and they know it's important to their clients. So, you know, if they can work with a client where the client is their inspiration, that's a whole next level of design work. Mm. Okay. Right. And this is, this is a level deeper or is it really can be the surface of, I like to work with clients that, you know, we, we, you know, you listen to the show. So we mm -hmm. say all the time, you know, busy working families with two kids and three dogs, right? right? Like, right. like right. we say that sort of throwing <laughs> it out there, but it is a true psycho and psychographic and demographic yeah right but how do sure you how do you how does you know client Susie think about that same broad description of you know busy working couple with two kids and two dogs that client Sally does like how do mm -hmm. they what are some of the ways that Sally and Susie would say something different about what seemingly looks like the same client yeah well I mean I'll say first of all that I think part of the reason you say that so much, and, and I mean, we all look at that being the demographic, right, mm -hmm. is because you have to, you can only serve the market that's there, right? So if you say, okay, I live in this place where that's what everybody is like, but I want to work with, you know, single, young city dwellers with tons of money. Mm. If you don't live in a place where those people are, 
you're not going to be able to make that your target <laughs> it's market. Be hard. You know, it's not going to be viable, <laughs> right? So, so the the target market you're talking about there that is so seems so same same is because those are the people that you know tend to have the money, and there's there's a lot of them everywhere, so a lot of designers can find them. Mm-hmm. Um, but back to your you know Susie versus Sally. I mean, I think human to human, we all see people differently and interact with people differently. And this is, that's actually one reason why I am so, um, so adamant about my clients letting their own personalities come through in their copy. I'm kind of taking you on a rabbit trail, but I'm circling back to what you're asking. Okay. Um, a lot of designers think that they need to sound, you know, designery, polished and professional. You know, if I just ask somebody, how do you want to sound? Well, I want to sound polished and professional. Mm. Okay, yes, we know that. You need to sound that way because you're a creative and you want people to understand you're also managing their budget and you're Mm. managing their major undertaking of a project. So you have to sound professional. But I also want to pull in my client, the interior designer's personality because it's like that, I mean, it's kind of an old saying now, but like your vibe attracts your tribe kind of thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you know, when when I'm working with a client and I notice they are hilarious and witty and have a great sense of humor, I'm going to really encourage them to pull that into their copy mm. because I also suspect that that's how they're interacting with their clients. So maybe Sally has that, you know, quick wit and keeps her clients in stitches to lighten the mood and it helps their experience <laughs> and everybody's having fun and you know the result the service experience is better and the end result is better versus who did I say Sally so Susie over here <laughs> maybe she's more subdued maybe she's more like my introverted client who has a softer touch and her clients are looking for that and really you know like to be led gently and eased into these big, big, big decisions, and they're, they'd be scared of Sally. Okay. And so in there, where I, I this is the first time I'm having this aha moment right here. Okay. okay. So here it is. Like Here's the aha moment. moment I had, <laughs> is that when we say two career couple, busy, f- fast life, ex- uh, you know, expendable, that's not expendable money. What's the kind of money? <laughs> um, I know what you're talking about. You know, about. extra money. Let's go there. Yeah. Extra yeah. money. <laughs> put aside. It's put aside. Discretionary money, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Right, right. So two yes. career couple has some dollar bills, has two kids, has two dogs. And my first question in that was like, What's different? So how does Susie find hers and Sally find hers? And I'm hearing it. So what you're saying is not only is Susie and Sally completely different personalities, but in once you get further beyond the outward two career couple, maybe in one couple, the wife is the VP of XYZ yeah. and she's a power broker mm-hmm. and the husband is the guy who takes care of the house mm-hmm. and vice versa in the other, maybe they're both VPs, whatever, but one, you know, the wife who's going to do the interacting might, okay, I get it. I get yeah. it. I love that. That's the first time I had that clarity. Okay. Yes, good. it is because what it is, is the big description is the same, but the personality yes. in the pers- yes. descriptions are different. And that's Always where different. you tap into your personality yes. and speak. So you're introverted, you speak to the introverted. And the two career couple that happens to be a power couple, if one of them is the decision maker and is yes. leading the search and they're introverted, they're going to find you. Yes. Love it. Wow. Four and a yeah. half years. Yay. Awesome. I love that. Can I tell you a little story about that too? A little client story? So uh, we were talking off air about a client, Janelle Fotopoulos. Love Janelle. Interior Design. She's fabulous. (laughs) Really, really fun, smart lady. And she has a fantastic design team. So anyway, I worked with her um, on her website copy and she, we were talking about her clients and she is a very vibrant personality mm-hmm. and you know big personality and she's funny and she's friendly and warm and she's just like a big hug um and then her and her aesthetic pulls in all these bright colors and bold patterns so i was assuming that her clients are big personalities and bright bold people as well And as we were talking about that, she went, you know what, that's actually not the case. My clients tend to be 
very hesitant. Hmm. So it was, it was, I was surprised. Like I made assumptions. You can't make assumptions right. about who these people are and what they think about. And fortunately, you know, I knew to dig more and she, you know, came out with, wait a minute. No, actually. And what it turns out is that in her processes, she has a zillion touch points that are reassurances mm. for those clients. And I mean, her, her processes are buttoned up They're you know, it's all built in of those clients who want that bold pattern and bright color in their homes, but they're a little afraid. Mm. They're not sure. Like I want it. I really think I want it but I don't trust just anybody to give me that. Interesting. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Yeah. So we ended up pulling out both her bright, bold, her, her tagline became live vibrantly. And we, but we pulled in a ton of all those reassuring, you know, we had phrases in there like we've got your back type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and let's go on this creative journey together kind of thing. Right. And so. that is so that is so key because I do know Janelle very well. And I've had, um, you know, of course, she's been on the podcast. I've met her in life um, several times. And of course, we've had the opportunity to uh, uh, quote some projects for her with, with through Window Works. And their process is buttoned up. It is. And so I can see how the personality that wants that steady, knowledgeable partner to lead them through it would gravitate mm -hmm. to Janelle and her firm. Yep. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is you would almost say on, you know, who wouldn't want that? But a lot of people don't, a lot of people don't, they, not that they don't want it, but they don't care about it. It's not, a, it's yeah. not a criteria, right? Yeah. Well, and even if they do, you know, even if you did say everybody wants it, every designer delivers that differently. And, you know, it may be, it, it could even be something that a designer's clients assume. So to highlight it in their copy, they'd be going, so what? You're, I hope, I hope that's the least you do for me. I want to know something else. Right. So those are the kinds of things. We've got to understand not only who your clients are, but also what do they care about? Mm. What, you know, what's going to make them trust you to hire you? And, and I'm even looking at it, Luann, like I do not, I feel like I'd be doing my clients a disservice if I help them attract clients that they're not right for mm -hmm. because then my client's miserable trying to serve their clients that they're not right for. And I've created this cycle. I have, I'm not Catholic, but I have Catholic guilt. I should be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I love it. Okay. So that's a very, that, you know, price of admission right there that think about your client and really get it all the way down there. Now you touched a little bit like number two on your little, hip parade here is think about how you're different from your competitors in your aesthetic and we touched a tiny bit right there with Janelle that she's got she's bold and she's vibrant and she loves to use that in her designs and so that's as simple as that like mm -hmm. we've got Sarah Brennan who has coined the phrase romantic transitional mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. when you look at her Instagram you know you get it that's her right. look right so that's all fine so I'm I'm giving that I'm like we, we want to I identify where our own personal aesthetic is and, you know, call it out. But what about when you work with a designer, Deb, who says, you know, I don't really have a, a particular aesthetic. Mm -hmm. I will design Tuscan today, Mediterranean, farmhouse chic the next day, and, you know, bold and vibrant the th day after I do whatever my clients want. How, what, what's the answer there? Well, ironically, I just wrapped a project working with a designer who does exactly that. Mm. And I mean, that's really, that's one of her primary differentiators mm -hmm. because where she is geographically, no one else is doing that. Everyone else has a certain style that, that, you know, keeps happening again and again in, in her geographical area. And that's fine. That's great. But she and I both know there are clients who live in that area who don't want that same look. Right. They have their own style. So guess who her clients are built in, ready and waiting for her and going to be her biggest fans. Mm. So we put that all over her copy that you inspire my aesthetic. You as the client, you know, we even if you don't know what your aesthetic is, I'm an expert at helping you figure that out. And when I'm saying this in first person, I'm talking about my client. Not right. Me. Um, you know, so she's an expert at helping them define that and make it a look that looks finished and polished and well-designed as opposed to, you know, haphazard. 
So that's her niche right there. Okay. And the truth is, I, I mean, I can hear Sarah Brennan in my head. We just had a conversation last mm-hmm. week, and she said th- she's in the middle of working on a project that is – challenging her in a good way she's Mm -hmm. excited Mm -hmm. about it because it's a project that specifically isn't romantic transitional so (laughs) it doesn't mean that a designer who has a specific aesthetic cannot work out of it it's just that when you truly enjoy that aesthetic there's no problem with calling it out and Mm -hmm. making that front and center so that the people who also like it will tend to call you you got it. Okay. And that that's true of, I say that to my clients a lot about even do they put, they I always get asked, do I put my location on my website? They don't want to do that because most designers want to be open for that dream project in New York or Paris or wherever. <laughs> and I, and I get that. I understand that. But here's the deal. It's just like, and I'm sure everybody that you talk to, well, I know this, everybody you talk to that talks about niching says, you know, if you, if you don't appeal to anyone specific, you're not going to appeal to anyone at all. Mm -hmm. So it's the same kind of thing. Like if you have a specific aesthetic, stand on it. Like you, you have to take a stand in your business about certain things. And one is your aesthetic Two, I believe is your location and where you are so that people can actually find you. Mm -hmm. That's so important for your SEO. And three is, you know, your beliefs about design, your values, your clients' values, all those kinds of things that are, you know, back to kind of the psychographic things, the things about you and how you deliver your service that, you know, you, you would stake your business on. I will not do business in X way. I will only deliver this level to my client and that kind of thing. So Mm -hmm. I really encourage them to be opinionated. It's it's a writing lesson, actually, that I learned in college. You have to take a stand to write something well. And so I try to get my clients to take a stand so I can write well for them. Right. I agree with you because, you know, plain vanilla is whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it, you know what yeah. it is? It's not that I can't work with you if you're plain vanilla. It's not that I'm not attracted to work with you, but I probably don't even get to you. You know what I'm right. saying? And exactly. I have to say, I have a personal pet peeve when a designer's website does not have their location on it and mm-hmm. does not have their name Yes. Oh my goodness. Me too. Deb, Me too. I've been to Me people's too. websites and it's like, you know, XYZ interiors and it's like, you know, I don't know, ABC interiors and mm-hmm. the about you page has a beautiful picture of the interior designer and it's we this and we that yes. and we this. And I'm like, well, who the heck are you? Like, and I literally have dig, dug through. Mostly it happens if I get um, a pitch by somebody or, yes. or somebody on Instagram, you know, comments. And then mm-hmm. I want to go over and look yeah, into you. And yeah. if I got to go two pages past your about you page and I still haven't found your name, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. I just, it's like all I can do, but to like give you a yeah. lesson right there in a the DM, like you're kidding yeah. me, sweetie. Right. Yeah. And, and not to have your state, I think is a mistake. And I also think it should say your city because mm-hmm. if I'm so enthralled with you and I found you through Pinterest or Instagram, if I've got some dollar bills and you're in Charlotte and I'm in New Jersey, I might still reach out and exactly. hire you. Exactly. That's never going to stop right. anyone in Paris or New York or wherever from finding you. Right. It will never stop those dreams projects that are remote but it will stop your local bread and butter business from finding you exactly that's the truth of it that's oh my goodness that's a the better way to describe it because if i find you on instagram or pinterest and i like you and i don't know you're in the same city or state as me i might be like well you know she's amazing or he's amazing but i probably can never work with them Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I just get annoyed because I want to know about you. Yeah, right. <laughs> and and I think to myself, what client wouldn't want to be like me and want to know about you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, anyway. Okay. So, we're going to take a stand in our aesthetic. And even if that stand is that we call out that I can do, you know, there's a difference. I just want to clarify. There's a difference in being able to execute any aesthetic and having a choice to have a preference in aesthetic. Yes. Okay, yep. and and also by the same token, your client having a choice to have not a preference in aesthetic. It's yes. just the thing. Your message is just say it. Just say it. Say yes. I have a choice, or say I don't. But mm-hmm. say whichever it is. Okay, love it, love it, love it. Exactly. Okay, and then the other thing is is that you say think about how you're different 
from your competitors or just from your colleagues. I like that word better. Um, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, in who you are as a person. So this kind of comes back to that other conversation about being introverted and and um, all of those things. Do we have other things we want to cover in that? Values yeah. of work into this? How do we do that? Yeah, values absolutely work into that. And, you know, the one main thing I would say about values is sometimes – the values that you, you know, put in place for your business. These are our core values. Okay. Sometimes they matter to your clients and sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. And as a case in point, almost every client I get tells me I have a passion for interior design. Well, no kidding. (laughs) Exactly. Join the billion of you. (laughs) Right. And, and, and I get that they're trying to say something deeper about mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. So I do try to dig around, but I also know your client doesn't care if you have a passion about design. They're not there to let you have fun. Like, <laughs> it's love you know that. what I mean? Yeah, I do. It, it, it is true that as creatives, we need permission, AKA payment to do our crafts, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and, and, that's the only way we're going to continue in business. And we have this passion, so we want the business. But they don't care. So don't talk about that. Don't ever talk in your social media, copy, anything that you're passionate about interior design. It's a moot point. They don't care. And it's a given. I love it. <laughs> so, you know, just think about your core values and, and anything that you want, that you think you're wanting to say about your business you have to turn it around and look at it through the client's eyes. Are they going to care? And, you know, even more so, could it be a detriment? Mm -hmm. Could it be a turnoff? Um, Yeah, you just, I mean, you just have to, you can't just look at it through your own eyes and stop there. But that's also why, you know, it's so helpful to work with other people is Mm -hmm. because we can't, I had a, uh, a business coach who used to say, you can't cut your own hair. Like we don't have the perspective to see mm. all those things. So many times, you know, if you have a sounding board, whether it's another colleague, and I like that word and I'm taking it too now, <laughs> if you have another colleague in the business that you can talk to about these things and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to say this on my website. Do you think they care? Do you think my clients will care? Um but yeah. So, so it's interesting because I, you know, one of my other pet peeves is if I read somebody's about you page and I could take their name out and, and substitute mm-hmm. anybody mm-hmm. else's name. And, and it happens a lot. And I'm sorry because I'm sounding so, you know, not nice about it, but it is a little trying sometimes. And I think about if I were truly trying to vet an interior designer and I had the option of eight or 10 designers in a 25 to 50 mile radius that I was going to consider hiring. And by the time I read the fifth website, I don't know if it's Susie, Sally, Harry, David, like it's nuts. Right. 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 And so the thing about it also for me is, is, uh, well, I I shouldn't say the thing. What I want to know about it from you, Deb, is it's one thing to have a passion for interior design. And I agree with you. Don't tell me you have a passion because I don't care. It's like, it's the same (laughs) thing on the show. I don't care about Mm -hmm. it. I Mm -hmm. I know you have it. I make an assumption, right? So I feel like clients are the same way in what you're saying, but isn't it you, I'm really asking you, I feel like there's an okay way to say it. If it connects to something authentic, that makes me go, whoa. Yes. Right? Like, so yes. if your passion from interior design, like I can't think of the person's name now, but it's, oh, Leah, Leah, May, Leah Mayer, uh, Meyer Perez. She uh-huh. said um, in her bio, it had this little line and it said, you know, her father, she worked in her fa- with her father in his garage growing up and he had some sort of business. I don't forget the details, but you see what I remember? I spoke yep. to this young lady eight, nine, ten months ago at this point, and I remember that line in her bio. And it made me think, oh, that this is really something that connects to her soul, yes. that she re- 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 she connects it to her, her father. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. So, And this is how I... I look at this. So this is going to sound a little weird, but I say that I write in layers. Mm. And what I mean by that is like when you're taking the about page, no, it shouldn't be a resume where you can take the name out and it could be any qualified designer, Mm -hmm. but you might need some qualifications in there. 
you know, if right. there are certain, there's certain clientele who really do want to see those credentials. So that's one layer. Another layer is, no, you shouldn't be talking about your passion because that's so generic, but a story like that could really connect and resonate and be memorable. So that's one layer. But mm -hmm. another layer to think about is your about page shouldn't be all about you. And mm -hmm. I know you've had, I know you've had people talking about this in the past on your show that, you know, the, the center of your about page should really be the client. They really need to, really, your whole website, everything you say and do, they should see themselves in it. Your ideal client should see themselves in it. So, you know, you kind of have to learn how to, it, it, like, let's say you're going to DIY your copy. You have to learn how to make mention of certain things. Mm. So instead of maybe having three paragraphs about how you worked with your dad and his garage and a business or whatever, you make mention of it. You drop it in. Maybe right. it's a little parenthetical phrase and you make mention of your credentials, but you're really centering the whole about page on your clients and their needs and how you understand them. Does that make any sense? It's oh, so hard to describe. I know. No, it makes perfect sense. And I love it. And it, and it's it's been, you're doing a very good job of getting Yay. it from, yes, you are, <laughs> from an ideal to a practical yeah. thing. And, yeah. and that has been, you know, one of the more difficult conversations on the podcast is to try and help all of us understand that layer. And I love mm -hmm. the word that you use, the layers. But it is true. I mean, when I think about it, I've I've interviewed over 540, 50 people at this point. And mm -hmm. when I think like when you're describing, you know, what makes you you, right? So that's what mm -hmm. we're on, step three. Mm -hmm. What makes you you? I think yes. about Victoria Sanchez. And Victoria Sh Sanchez, her bio it was, yes, she's she's a, an interior designer that loves color. So maybe that's the same as Janelle. But you know why she loves color is she, she doesn't say she loves color for this reason, but she shows it, shares in her bio that, you know, her father is from, you know, one country. Her mother's from another country. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. one's from France and one's from uh -huh. somewhere in South America. And again, I'm not remembering the specific details, but I it's a it's a bio that made an impression on me because my brain immediately as a potential consumer went, oh, she's going to be amazing at yes. like layering boldness and colors yes. and artifacts and, you know, unusual things because I'm imagining her childhood. She could have drove, grew up on Smith Street in the middle of Brownsville for all I know, mm -hmm. but I just created a whole childhood of hers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when something is said in your copy that can take root and make a connection, that's golden because right. that's really the ultimate goal. I mean, and again, to me saying that you write in layers on your website, um, you're, you need to accomplish a few different things. You need to convey information. Some basic information needs to get said. Mm -hmm. Another pet peeve of mine a little bit is when they don't really talk about their services at all, mm -hmm. you know, and clarify, do we only do full service design or do mm -hmm. we also do some kind of consultative model? Right. Um, that's an area where you just have to convey the basic info and it's important to the client. So you have to do it, but there are other areas where you look to make a connection. So I do believe in using story in, in your website, in your copy, in your, you know, social media and whatever, but I don't believe in only using story. Mm. I think communication, there are one of my, biggest if, if we're going to say what I'm passionate about in life it's it's not writing it's communicating mm. it's communicating that connects people like what do they need to hear what kinds of things do I need to convey and it's usually not you know one single thing it's usually layers of information and layers of to build a connection with someone you gotta do more with it than just present them with flat one-dimensional information right right and you've got to do more than just talk about yourself. I love it. If you want to make a connection with people, we're talking about real communication. And that's why writing is so flipping hard, Luann. Yeah. Well, that's why we need <laughs> professionals to do it for well, us. <laughs> I mean, yes, but I also, you know, I also want people to not shy away from it so much because I really believe, and this not to undercut my own business, but I really believe more people can write better than they think they can. They're intimidated intimidated by the grammar and the spelling and all of that 
But if you have a message and something to say, I believe you can find a way to write it. Now, again, you might need to unravel that big ball in your head with someone to mm -hmm. help you figure out exactly what to say. But don't worry about the spelling and the grammar. Get the message right, and you're golden. The computer can correct your spelling and your grammar. It's the truth. And you can hire that out, too. Yeah, right. Exactly. You can get somebody to, yes. to edit for copy, I mean, yes. for grammar and punctuation. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, and it, and it is true because um, if you just forgive yourself of that, Yes. And just put your heart, your soul, your ideas, your visions, your core, you know, things that make you you out, the rest of it can be shaped up. Yes. And it's not, you know, it's not how we learn to write in school. We learn to be scared of the grammar. Right. And all it's that the truth. You're exactly right. We were taught to be afraid of it. You're exactly yes. right. And But that's also where, you know, social media is a blessing and a curse. Mm. But in the way that it's a blessing, I think, is that it's made so many people not be intimidated to write and, mm. and be able to say whatever their message actually is. So, I mean, interior designers, I also know, you know, it's a mixed bag because you, designers are busy and they're not, you know, they're not in the business so that they can you know, go, most of them aren't, so they can go write their own copy and all their social media and all their blog posts and on and on. And I get it. So, you know, how, however you need to break that up, of hiring out versus doing yourself or whatever, you do need to have something to say and develop that. And you do need to understand what your client needs to hear from you. So you can kind of get all those layers in there, mm. um, whether you're writing it yourself or hiring it out. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then once we have worked on all of this and we've gotten this messaging down and we've put it into client language, things that, uh -huh. like you said, you know, you're speaking to your client, you want your client when they read it to feel like they're in there, like they're yeah. reading about themselves. Like these yes. are the things that are, are that I want this, I want more of this, right? Yes. Then we're going to sprinkle it not just on the about you page or the bio page, we're going to weave this throughout our, all of, not just our website, but our social media, our blog writing, right? We're going to like put this everywhere we can yes. to just get the message out of you know who we're talking to mm -hmm. yeah so I mean one of the easiest exercises I think for developing that language and and knowing how to talk to your clients is just reading your reviews and seeing the kind of language mm -hmm. they use so that's just kind of a quick and easy way to go oh you know they're using the term um, pink colors as opposed to I would use palette or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, it, whatever mm -hmm. it is you want to speak in their language. But to sprinkle it through everything, um, you know, I if you're, if you're not going to work with someone like Nicole or, you know, a branding type of person or even me because I do that work with my clients as well, if you're not going to work with someone at this point, I would say start a file. Just start a file on your computer and you know, I would call it messaging. I'm not mm. sure what, you know, everybody yeah. else would call it. But because I think the biggest enemy of writing is the blank screen or the blank page. Yes, like yes. you're looking at that blank, you know, and don't know what to do. So, it, and when you open up your Instagram and it's blank and you have to write your caption, you don't know what to write. So develop a messaging file where you're just sort of jotting down these snippets of thoughts of like, you know what? I really believe that my clients deserve X. I really believe they de deserve to be treated in a certain way, or I really believe they deserve to have some kind of something wrapped in to the service as a whole that I don't think, you know, my colleagues um, <laughs> deliver. Um, then jot that down in that messaging folder. And, you know, or, or even like, you know, oh, somebody said this word about my aesthetic and that's a word that I need that. I need to remember that. Mm. Put it in that folder. So then when you do go to write a blog post or you do go to write an Instagram post or whatever or put it in, put it in your website, you not only have some, you know, some material to work with, something to build from instead of just a blank screen, but you also have some consistency there. Because you can keep saying some of the same little bits and pieces in every area of your messaging, every area of your marketing. I love it.
It's so, it's so good. It's so good. It's such a, um, you know, I have said before, it, your process is, is different but similar from the Kohlheimers. Yeah. And I've said that it's like therapy for your business. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just sit down yeah. and somebody's <laughs> like, what about this? And what yeah. about that? And what do you think about this? And you're like, hmm, what do I think about that? And what do I hear my clients say about me? And, yeah. you know, blah, blah, blah. And, it's, and I love the oh, idea yes. of developing a messaging folder. And I have said... You know, over and over again, I love the idea about the reviews. I mean, I I told this story one time. This is a, this is a pretty funny story. One of the most time consuming parts for me of producing the podcast is writing the intro outro. Yeah. And it doesn't seem like it would be because it's not that long. It's anywhere from two to five minutes. It's not that uh -huh. big of a deal. Uh -huh. But you know, I want the intro to relate to the show and I want the outro to tell you all the things I think about the show. So yep. that means that I have to listen to the show over again. Because <laughs> <laughs> you have so much time. Right? And I can't do it while I'm doing something else. That's mm -hmm. the critical thing. It's like I've already taken the hour, hour and 15 minutes to record the show with you and I always end up with a minimum of two pages of notes and you would think that would be enough to craft the intro outro. But it never is. I always, uh -huh. I'm like, you know, you have to go back and listen to it now and really pull out what you think is important. And so the thing is, I got to a point where I said to myself, this is insanity. I've got to let go of this. There's podcast after podcast after podcast that just says, hi, guest, tell us your name and tell us a little bit yeah. about yourself. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. no intro, no bio, no nothing. Right. And then they just wrap it up in the show. Well, thanks so much, Bill, for being with us. See you. Bye. And I was like, that is it. I am done. I am yeah. just doing it without the intro outro because yeah. I can be more efficient, blah, blah, blah. And Deb, I'm telling you, it was like the universe just literally you know, it like spit in my eyeball because in a good way, because no sooner did I start to say, I started to flirt with the idea. Would I really drop that? Would I not do it? Would I listen to that? And, thing, and I probably tried it once or twice and I will do it on a power talk Friday. I will all day long tell you every once in a while on a power talk Friday, I will do it. Right. But I, all of a sudden I go to the iTunes to look at the reviews, which I look at about once a week just to see because, you know, uh -huh. I like to shout it out if I can. And, and to your point, I like to see what they like. And so here it was, the top review and the intro outro. I mean, that's what I live for. I live for the outro. Actually, <laughs> some of the times I've missed some of the points and uh -huh. I love the way you do. And I'm like, really? Right. That was one. <laughs> Within the same week, I get an email from somebody saying, la, 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 la. And I'm so grateful that you take the time to do the outro. And I was just like, all right, universe, yeah, I'll crap. keep doing the intro and outro. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. You know, and of course I can't task it with anybody because it's not what, you know, it's what I think is important, right? Like Well, yeah, that's it. And and that I mean, it speaks to also that, you know, sometimes the things that our clients love the most aren't the things that we're charging for. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I'm not getting paid for my intro outro. I can believe yeah, you promise yeah. you that. But I mean the truth is people what I'm gathering and what's true for me is listening because we also want to know what Luann thinks. Yeah. We want to know what you think about what everything that was just said. Mm, that's, you know what? I never thought of it in that, in a, a concise sentence like that, but I guess that is well, it. I mean, I'm yeah. a right. That's it. That's it. I love it. Right. <laughs> and so, so, but that's the thing. It's the same for us as, you know, business owners, right? What yeah. did, when we, when a client wrote a thank you letter to us, what did it say yeah. when a client made a Google review? Because, you know, the truth of the matter is even a simple Google review that you ask a client to do and they wouldn't have done if you didn't ask them, they're still going to pick something that made an impression on them. Yeah. Right. Whether it was you called when you said you were going to call or you took your shoes off or, you know, I don't know what it is. But that's the funny thing about that is that paying attention to what people tell you about yes. what you do. And then to your point, that's what you come back out and lead with. And you say, I do this. And don't yes. you don't think for one second I don't say that to my sponsors when they're vetting me. Well, <laughs> You know, everybody wants to hear my outro, so they don't fast forward. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So you are selling it. I mean, yeah, and you bring up a good point because not just in not just in reviews, but sometimes you get the more authentic, organic, and profound feedback from 
your clients in just an email yep, or right. a thank you card. Right, right. right? They're, Conversation, they're just quickly a jotting thank something you. off. Yep. Oh my gosh, I'm so thrilled that you did this or that you said that. Mm -hmm. And they would never put that in a, re I mean, I had a client one time just say, oh my gosh, I feel such a weight off my shoulders. It's like I just had a massage mm -hmm. <laughs> after a, like a session with me. And See? she wouldn't have put that in a review, but yeah. So, and yeah. so then now your copy can be, let me take the weight off of your shoulders and <laughs> create you the copy for your website, sweetie. There you go. <laughs> yep. And we all just went, oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, I know. I love it. I love it. So cool. So here's the thing. We can work with you in a couple of different ways. Certainly yeah. you have full service, right? Mm -hmm. A to Z, full service, deep yep. dive into everything you do and everything you need as far as, as it relates to copy, whether it be website copy, blog post copy, email funnel copy, all of that. And then what I also love is that you also have this writer for a day. I mean, who but an interior designer to appreciate writer for a day? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. And it Maybe you're talking to your ideal client there. Well, I'm not there sure. Yep. I mean, it actually grew out of the fact that exactly that. I mean, my not only not only do do they understand that language but we there's always so many analogies between what I do and how I work with my clients mm -hmm. and interior designers and how they work with their clients so you know the analogy is of course that sometimes you need something done a little bit less sort of thoroughly mm -hmm. and that you know full service a to z is is a little bit too much service for what you need I mean the truth of the matter is I have a lot of people who come to me that it's not necessarily that they're in a hurry, but it could be that, you know, maybe they, they already tried to do it themselves and they got some things great and mm -hmm. some things not so great. Mm -hmm. And they want a second set of eyes and, and me to, you know, not, I, I, I wouldn't say I do kind of an editing or a spit and polish because I say there's no such thing as an edit. It's always a rewrite. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> That's if you're really going to put that meaty, the differentiators and all that kind of stuff into it, you really usually have to rewrite it. But sometimes we're not starting fully, fully from scratch. And so my writer for a day is a more appropriate, you know, service level for them, as well as sometimes they, they want to work with me. They want to have their hands in it. I do have quite a few clients that are excellent writers. They're excellent writers, but they want to consult with me mm. and get my take on what they're doing. And we can do some, you know, some work together. Mm -hmm. But then there's also, you know, people who, you know, maybe they just need just, and I say just in quotes, because we all want everything new. But, you know, right now their priority is they've got to send, you know, a bio for whatever reason. So that could be something we could put in the container of a writer for a day service. And what I won't do is try to write without understanding my clients and without understanding who they're serving and, and trying to, to dig up those differentiators and trying to unwind that big ball of stuff in their heads. Because first of all, that's what I do best. That's kind of my, when I score on um, personality tests, I'm always like through the roof on empathy. Mm. And that just means that I can see things from all these different angles. I understand every stakeholder <laughs> in right. a scenario. So, you know, bringing that perspective in and, and me trying to understand and ask questions about all those things takes a little time. So we can take time in the morning, I mean, it is a day. It's a writer for a day. It's a six-hour day, um, and we take time in the morning. There's, of course, some pre-work for the client, questionnaires, and usually sending me some collateral that they already have, um, you know, whether it's a their, you know, their welcome kit to their clients or, you know, their a, a previous uh, marketing effort that they did. So get my arms around some of that preliminary stuff, and then we get on the phone in the morning, and sometimes it's an hour call and then I can write what they need for the, the rest of the time for the five hours. And sometimes it's a three hour marathon call mm -hmm. and we got to really dig in there. It, it depends on what we're trying to accomplish, what the deliverable is. And it depends on how well they already, you know, have those brand underpinnings in place. Like if somebody had worked with someone like Nicole in the past, who did a great job of developing that messaging and they, they really did just need the deliverable, we might be able to get that done and, and then some. Right, 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 right. Yeah. I love it. I love the, I love, what I love is that we can understand that 
look, anybody that spends a half hour on the phone with you and says they're going to write your bio, now we're back to just substitute Mary for Sally. Yeah. Honestly. Yep. You right. Got it. And so yeah. that's a straight up, you know, Fiverr copywriter for forty dollars. <laughs> Let's exactly. be serious. And sometimes that's what people want and right. need and that's fine right. and I'm good with that. Right. That's not what I do though. Right. And it, that might be when you're truly hashtag baby designer entry level mm-hmm. and you've mm-hmm. got to put something on a website and mm-hmm. you really are right. staring at a blank page and you don't know how to do punctuation and grammar. Like that's a exactly. that's a legit thing. Like I can't add yes. and subtract. Like, you know, you know, it's <laughs> you know, it's not it's not a negative. We all can't do everything everything right? right but this your service the designer for the designer for the day the writer for a day is getting into the head and really understanding it's no different than yep. a designer coming to somebody's house somebody can call them on the phone and say i want you to design my entire great room from you know the phone conversation and it's like i have two sofas three cats and a chair like you know what i mean yeah. you're like no 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 no. i gotta come over i gotta see this stuff <laughs> so you're spending exactly. time coming over and seeing exactly. the stuff in our heads <laughs> yeah so i I yeah, love it. And, and you know what? I got to believe that the value, first of all, this is $1,200. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think it's worth every penny. And I will say to you that, like I say to a lot of people, I think you could charge more. Just going to say, okay. <laughs> but okay. I won't encourage you to until all of my <laughs> listeners get a chance to take advantage of it. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll put a pin in that. <laughs> but the thing about what it is, is, is my guess is that beyond the deliverables, the English land beyond the deliverables <laughs> that you and the designer agree within the parameters of the beginning conversation of what you can realistically spec- yes. expect at the end of it. Exactly. I got to say beyond that, it is like that therapy for your business. It's going to take yeah. you to other things when you're on a speaking panel and yes. somebody asks you a question and then you're like, boom, let me pull that out of my hat here because mm-hmm. this is really who I am and how I show up. And mm-hmm. I've learned that through a process similar to this. So mm-hmm. it's it's well, and my, you know what I always say, oh, wait, could I spend $1,200 on this and attract my ideal client that wants to do a $20,000 job? Yes, ma'am. Yep. Put my 1200 yep. down. You know what I'm saying? I mean, exactly. come on. We always have to understand what is our, our expected ROI on something. And um, I think it's a tremendous value. Tell everybody how they contact you, Deb, if they're interested in this. <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty easy to remember on Instagram. I'm design writer, Deb. You can always DM me there. I'm always looking at that. Um, and then through my website, which is just debmitchellwriting.com. I have a contact form and my email address is Deb at debmitchellwriting.com. All right. I love it. Well, I got to tell you, thank you so much for showing up. And I'm so glad that we started our little friendship on Instagram and that I it's know, transferred to real life. <laughs> I know. The universe put us together. That's and I right. just love talking to you, Luann. <laughs> One of these days, we're going to turn the tables and I'll interview you. How's oh, that sound? Well, that's, you know, I love to be interviewed. <laughs> I gotta tell I'll you. interview you on your show. We'll do a little ask me anything. Oh, that should be fun. We could do that. I would do that. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. People would love that. They want to hear to more pre- outros. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to write the intro outro for oh, it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness well thank you so much for coming on and thank you for sharing all this information with us Deb thank you so much Luann listen I know you're busy and I know all this talk about writing might be a bit scary but promise me that you'll at least block out some time just to take a look at the copy that you are using in the different places in your business okay ask yourself, does it speak to your ideal client? When reading it, is it possible that somebody will have an aha moment, all right, from reading your About You page or your email newsletter, right? I don't want you to bore your potential clients with the generalizations that they've heard hundreds of times, right? So this is like when I say all the time about, you know, the dunes and the beaches. It's like, you know, you're all passionate about interior design. You, do you do you get that? So telling me on your website, on your About You page, that you're passionate about interior design is not enough. It's one thing. I don't care if it's there because not every word is going to make every one of us jump off, you know, our you know, (laughs) up and down and call you, right? But there has to be something more there that makes you stand out when 
consumers read your website. So as you go through your website and your emails, because that's what you're going to do, you're going to block out some time and do it, right? I want you to pretend that our beloved Fred Burns and Nicole Heimer are perched on your shoulder, just looking over your shoulder, reminding you to make your copy express what is truly special about you, okay? You're Nicole Heimer defining your brand. Think about it. Does this define my brand? And our Fred Burns only, does this convey my only, all right? Let your personality shine through. This is the differentiator that will make you memorable when your client moves away from the page and is looking at another designer's website. Okay. Now, if you'd like to differentiate your design project with sleek, modern, mid-century furniture, take a look at Article. Article offers both indoor and outdoor furniture with distinctive Scandinavian-inspired design. When you open your trade account with Article, let them know you heard about them from yours truly by using the URL welldesigned.article.com. All right. Welldesigned.article.com. Now, remember, as Deb reminds us, writing your business copy requires you to not only define your personality, your style, and what makes you distinctive, but it's equally important that your writing must speak to your client, right? So one thing, one part of it is telling us what's different about you, but then the other part is talking directly to your client. And I love that Deb says to only make mention of your credentials and your story, okay? Write for your clients. What do they want to hear? Okay, so I'm going to tell you, they want to know (laughs) that you understand their pain points, that their lifestyle and their lifestyle aspirations, that you get it, okay? So if your writing is all about you, they're not going to get it. They're not going to feel it, all right? Because ultimately, clients don't really care nearly as much about you as they care about themselves, justifiably. (laughs) They're coming there deciding who they should make their investment in in interior design, and they need and want to know how you can improve their lives and solve their problems. This is the key, right? And I would say, if you are a CEO of your interior design business, architecture business, window treatment business, and you want to improve your business with some sound advice and high-level coaching, you know I can help. I'm offering my year-long mentorship program. It's called Chairman of the Board, if you've heard me talk about it. You'll work directly with me to achieve long-term, quarterly, and monthly goals, all right? So if you're interested in learning about this, you can go to luannnigara.com forward slash C-O-B. All right, now let's take and share some of the highlights that I think you're going to want to remember from Deb's advice. First thing is start with the writing process with getting to know your clients. What do they care about? Think about that. What do they care about? Next, when writing, differentiate differentiate yourself by considering how you are different in your aesthetic, your processes, delivery of services, personality from other designers that you know, okay? There are differences. They're not, they don't need to be huge but there are little differences, and this is what you want to talk to, okay? Make your writing reflective of you. Don't write a bio that's so vanilla that we can substitute another designer's name for you, right? You, you've heard me say that before. I have looked at About You pages, and I thought I could put any designer's name on this page. And that is just, it's, um, for me, it, it irks me. It irks me because I'm coming to your page with a different point of view. I'm coming to your page to get to know you, to have a conversation with you about business, about your superpower. And so I get immediately like, what the heck, right? But a potential client, they're not going to get irked. They're, it's just not memorable. You see, they're not going to come to the page. They're not critiquing it the way I am. So they might not get, you know, upset about it, but there's nothing to remember you by, right? Okay. So a really good way to write what's really reflective of you and to understand that is to read your reviews that you have, whether they're on your Google page, whether they've been emails that you've been sent, maybe they've been sent in handwritten thank you notes from your clients. Okay. I know Nicole Heimer actually suggests that you call three or four of your best clients and say, why do you like working with me? And then stop talking and listen. 
<laughs> okay? Because it's not always what you think it is. And I promise you, it's the fifth thing on the list is going to be, and you do great design. <laughs> like the first four or five things are going to be other things that you bring to the process. Okay? And then... I want you to not be intimidated about writing, all right? Get your ideas out of your head and give it a stab and then have somebody else maybe just do the brush up of the editing or um, reading it over. If you absolutely are not capable of doing this, I get it. You don't have, not, not, we don't all have 15 superpowers. That's exactly what Deb is for, okay? Then the other really great tip is create a messaging folder, right? It's, this is like, you know, whether it's a notebook, it's a thing on your phone, whatever it is, but add to it as a client. Maybe you're having, you know, you're at a reveal install and a client says something to you and compliments you. And it's like, whoa, that's exactly what I just did. That's exactly who I am. Write these, these down, keep a list. Okay. Because then when you go to write your copy, you come back to this document, this little note thing, and you're, these are the things that people, all right? The other thing is you can start by finishing these statements. I believe my clients deserve. I believe my clients should experience. When speaking about me, someone said this, right? So this is this file. Keep it alive. Keep it writing. Keep it going. And when you want to refresh copy or you want to send an email out to somebody, uh, I'm talking about a marketing email, right? Go back to this folder. All right? And then, you know, just really refer to this as well when you're doing your social media posting and things like that and your Facebook posting. Okay. So this is how you start to develop your cohesive messaging. All right. And if you need a refresher on some of these ideas and tips for developing that cohesive messaging and brand, I would say go back to episodes 125 and 317 for Fred Burns. Okay. Where he talked about this and Nicole Heimer. All right. So 125 is Fred, 317 is Nicole. Nicole Heimer. And also, don't forget, we recently had Natalie Norcross here, episode 544, where she talked about finding your niche. So all of these will be helpful if you're really knee deep into this process right now. Now, if you're interested in working with Deb, she can help you unravel that big ball in your head and communicate effectively with your client. To find out more about Deb and to check out our copywriting and marketing packages, go to debmitchellwriting.com. All right, debmitchellwriting.com. And you can also find her at Design Writer Deb on Instagram. All right, so I hope that today um, you will take some of this to heart, that you will take seriously your messaging and your copywriting. I know that there's so much to do in your business. Like, I really do get it. And uh, who has complained more than me that when we wanted to tell people about us at Window Works 100 years ago, we just simply put an ad in the newspaper and the phone rang. And now we do. We have to have so many different hats in order to reach and attract our ideal client. And it does take work. But when the, one of the number one things that faces our client is our website, It is so important that this be truly reflective of who you are. So I hope that you will block some time every single week. If it takes six months, it takes six months, whatever. It take one page every single week and try and work on it. All right. So I thank you so much for joining me today and spending your time with me. I really do value and appreciate that you show up. And um, I do read your reviews on iTunes and on Amazon for the book. (laughs) So just like you, this is where I go to understand and see what I'm doing right and what I could be doing better at. This is exactly the advice. So at least once a week, I go to Amazon and I see what reviews are there for the book and I go to iTunes and see what reviews are there on iTunes. So if you are one of the people I've taken the time to share that with me, I thank you because on you know the biggest level it's just so gratifying right to hear the differences that you're making in someone's lives and the things that they appreciate about what you do but on the another level this is exactly how i learn to continue to deliver exactly what resonates with you so all righty take it take it you know that step for yourself okay um you know, what else is there to say but decide to be excellent. Thank you.
Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.